Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Arma Guides. Today we will be taking a look at the basics of setting up a respawn system for a Eden Editor mission. It's so basically whenever you die you can get revived, uh, you can respawn, you can choose different places around the map to respawn at. It's fairly simple so let's go ahead and get right into this. The first thing you're going to need is player slots for people to actually choose and respawn positions. Setting up player slots is super easy. You just want to grab a soldier. You can use any soldier you want. And then you double left click on that unit. Then under object control, you want to uncheck player and check playable. And what this does is in the role selection menu, someone will be able to choose a soldier and play as a soldier, but it will not show up in the server. So you won't have random AI running around or collision boxes or anything like that. The soldier will only show up if there is a real person controlling it. And then role description, you can put this to whatever you would like. That is the name that shows up for this slot in the role selection screen. So if you had snipers and medics and things like that, you would name them differently so people would know what type of soldier they are choosing whenever they first join the server and they're selecting their class. So once you have done that, you can just copy and paste. You can put as many as you would like. However many soldiers you have is how many slots will be available. You can use any soldier type you want, and you can use any faction. You can use Opfor, Independent. You can even use Civilian. Now, by default, the soldier will have whatever type of loadout it has. So if I put an ammo man, then the, whoever takes control of that soldier will have the ammo man loadout. Same for marksmen, gunners, anything like that. They will use whatever loadout they have in the vanilla game. Now, once you have set up these positions, you are going to need actual respawn positions. So go up to your systems and then modules and go down to the multiplayer selection and choose the respawn position. And then you want to double left click on this, which will greet you with this menu under system specifics, respawn position. The name, you can put this as whatever you want. This is the name that will show up whenever someone is choosing their spawn. This is the name that'll show up on the map. And that's really all it does. The type, this is the type of respawn you can choose between vehicles or infantry. For the sake of this guide, just use infantry. I will be covering vehicle respawns in an upcoming guide. The side is the side that is capable of accessing this respawn point. So if it's set to leading side, which it is by default, then whatever team has the most amount of points in that mission will be able to spawn there. And of course, if you set it to blue four, op four, independent, or civilian, then only that faction will be able to spawn there. For the sake of this video, we're going to use blue four because that's the type of soldier we have put down. And then the show two option. This is who is able to see the respawn point on the map. By default, it's at everyone. So anyone on the server will be able to see the respawn position on the map. The side and its allies means that only the side capable of respawning there and whoever's allied with it will be able to see it. So for instance, blue four by default is allied with independent. So blue four would be able to see the spawn point and respawn there, but independent would only be able to see it. They could not respawn there. And then of course, only the side. So only the selected team will actually be able to see the respawn position. I recommend using only the side because it prevents map clutter and can keep your operations more concealed if you're doing special operations or things like that and you don't want the enemy knowing where it is you're respawning. Notification, I recommend disabling this. All this does is whenever this respawn position becomes enabled or available to players, it will send out a server-wide notification. Because you are doing this in the Eden Editor, you will get spammed with a bunch of notifications or a notification for every respawn position you have anytime you start the server. So I recommend just disabling this because it doesn't serve much of a point for respawn positions that are placed in the Eden Editor. Now, once you have your player slots set up and your respawn position set up, you need to actually set up your attributes. Now, another thing to note real quick is you can have as many respawn positions as you want. You can put them anywhere on the map. You can choose to place them wherever you want. And you can have one. You can have 100. It is completely up to you. I just recommend using different names to keep things from getting confusing. So now let's go ahead and look at actually setting up the server attributes you need to enable respawning and reviving. 
Now you need to set up the attributes that will actually enable you to respawn and revive players. To do this, simply go up to attributes and then select multiplayer. And then from here, you want to go to respawn. By default, respawns are disabled. You want to change this to respawn on customization. And then under the rule sets, make sure both selected respawn position and show respawn counter are enabled. Of course, there is more information in here, but right now these are the only two you need to worry about. And I will be covering these more in depth in the future. Respawn delay, this is how long you have to be in the respawn screen before you're capable of respawning. So say this was a minute after you die, you would have to wait in the respawn menu for a full minute before being able to respawn. Vehicle respawn delay, you can leave that as zero. Show scoreboard, completely up to you. I like to leave this enabled. And then allow manual respawn, I recommend leaving this enabled. It will allow players to hit escape and then kill their character and respawn. Now that's all you need really. The um, respawns are set up now, people can be killed, they can choose their respawn points and respawn there. But I like to have a revive system enabled, it just helps with the flow of missions and in mill sims and things like that, it can help stretch things out. Revive mode by default is disabled, um, so switch this to enabled for all players. And then required trait, this defines whether you need a medic or a basic soldier. Of course if it's on medic, then only medic class soldiers are capable of reviving. If it's on none, then any type of soldier is capable of reviving. Required items is pretty self-explanatory. You have to have one of these items in your inventory to be able to revive. First aid kits are consumed on reviving. Med kits are not. I like to leave this on none, but you can do whatever you would like with that. Revive duration. This is how long it takes someone to revive another player. I recommend anywhere between 2 to 10 seconds. It's completely up to you, but that's what I find to work best. Medic speed multiplier. This is how much faster a medic will revive. So if the revive duration is six seconds, then a medic would revive at, or in three seconds. You can set this whatever you would like. Two times is the default, and that's what I like to use. Force respawn duration is how long it takes you to force respawn your character when you're incapaci incapacitated. Um, so basically, if it's at three seconds, you have to hold down space for three seconds to force respawn. And then incapacitation mode, um, basically there's a basic and advanced. All you need is basic bleed out duration. This is how long you will lie there unconscious before bleeding out and dying. So if this is at two minutes, then you can sit there for a full two minutes before being forced to respawn. Um, two minutes is default and that's what I like to use, but you can set this to whatever you would like. And that's really all you need now. You have your respawn position, you have your soldier slots, you have respawn set up, and you have revive set up. So all you need to do now is load up this mission. Players can choose their soldier slot, and they can choose their respawn positions, they can revive soldiers. That's all there is to it, and you're all set up now. Um, there are mods that will implement different revive systems. There's also scripts. Everything here is completely vanilla, and in my opinion, the vanilla system is currently one of the best systems for this, unless you were working with a life server or something along those lines. That's pretty much everything for this guide. I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.